Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert. Now I have come down to deepest, darkest, sunny Hampshire and I've joined Tom Waterman from Audion. And we're gonna talk about um, mainly the amazing ASP800 and the first two channels on said device have the amazing HMX and Iron. Now, We've done reviews of this on Pro Tools Expert, and I know you guys have put plenty of um, videos out about yep. this thing, but we thought we'd take the opportunity to just show what this actually means in real life, and some of the kind of the science and some of your thoughts behind yeah. what makes those two channels so utterly amazing. Indeed, thank you, that's a nice compliment. Yeah, it's, a, it's sort of a concept that stretches beyond HMX and Iron on 800, which we can talk about, and that's really what's led to us adding that to the, the 800. So, so I've done reviews of it, I've used it plenty of times, it's now become Good. my kind of go-to for kick drum, for overheads, sounds absolutely amazing. What was the kind of the genesis, what was the inspiration behind adding those, that feature, or those two features, to those yeah. two channels? Well, I suppose to start really the, the sort of seed of the preamp really is that, that the building block, the Audion Mic Pre, is actually pretty neutral. I wouldn't say it's clean, because it has a certain thing to it, like a slight compression maybe. But it's, it's normally a, a pretty open palette, you know, it's not gonna get in the way or hurt a recording, you know, it's very much like a, it's your microphone, it's the sound of the mic. Um, which I think is good, and if you're gonna start with just one mic pre, then that's a great place to start. But of course, these days you want to maybe shape sounds to give you separation. So I, I think maybe before my time, probably about eight years ago, we had the Black Series, which was a, a modular MOSFET, very high voltage, so plus and minus 48 volt um, uh, class A circuitry, which was really trying to emulate tube channel strips. Uh, and in there we had a, a science, or saturation science we could call it, which was this sort of cascaded gain stage, much like um, a guitar preamplifier for a, for a guitar amp, where you have you know, a little bit of distortion from stage one, a bit from stage two, and a bit from stage three. And it, it sort of adds up to a more of a soft saturation. Uh, with MOSFETs, which is what we use for HMX. But before then, I was just a user of Audient products, much like yourself, so I, you know, doing sessions with them, and really liked HMX, but it found that it was really sort of a slow distortion, almost like a fat fattening. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually has a, a frequency sort of emphasis curve to it, which does deliberately try and fatten the low end. So I always really liked um, synthesizers, kick drums, that kind of thing. But if you wanted to preserve a transient or make something sing like an acoustic guitar, you know, where acoustic guitars have got a lot of complex harmonics. Um, it was maybe too much of it was like not really a good thing. You know, you needed to be subtle with that. So I always felt that it needed a, a yin to its yang, like a, 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 you know, a partner in crime effectively. So when we were talking through the 800 feature set, you know, we just decided that it would be nice to offer that sort of the contrast in color, which for me was the sparkle you get from, really from a class A amplifier driving a small transformer, uh, more like a 70 sort of, uh, amplifier stage mm. and that's where the two things got combined so you've effectively got the ability to move from neutral to soft and fat to more you know more punchy and sparkly or you can combine the two of them so I think it's how you find it you know hopefully when you're recording with it yeah I mean I, I tend to I think I'm learning actually the get the sound you want, commit to tape or to disc or whatever we're going to term it these days. Yeah. Let's use to tape because that's... It sounds cooler. <laughs> it sounds way cooler. Yeah. But I mean, a, a little bit is kind of cool. A lot is kind of getting edgy. A bit too much, you think, eh, let's ease it back a little bit. But the thing I love about it is actually, even if you do drive it to dist distortion, destruction, mm. call it what you will, um, it still sounds really musical. It's still got, it keeps the tonality of whatever you're, whatever you're recording, but it, I mean, a yeah. lot of what I do is drums. Yeah. Um, sounds great for overheads. I know, I know okay. Iron probably shouldn't, but if you're doing kind of a, um, a more rock track for overheads, it sounds, there's a, a distortion and it brings out in the, in the, the, yeah. the symbols. I think that's what people are used to hearing though. I mean, you've obviously been making music for quite a while and you've been listening to recorded drums from tape all the way through, you know, old 70s channel amplifiers. And so there's a lot of magnetics and transformers in the way there. So the sound of symbols you're used to is not bone cutting, you know, super transparent, fast symbols. I don't think anyone really likes that. I think generally we like, you know, symbols that have been pushed into tape a little bit or the top end is phase shifted and, the, you know, they just take the edge off and they sort of shimmer a bit. So I, I can see why you'd like iron for that because that's really what, one of the things we designed it to do. 
That's so, so we've got one of these. We've got an 800 and it's currently uh -huh. in bits. Yeah, um, prototype. <laughs> it looks absolutely incredible. I mean... Hold it up. You can have a look. Yeah, so I mean, effectively, the Audion mic pre is situated down in this left-hand corner, and there's there's a pair, one here, one here, and then a row of six standards there. Um, and so all of this section here is actually the HMX and the iron circuit. So these, these surface mount FETs that we use here, they're actually the Class A amplifiers, and the whole thing actually runs on 32 volts single rail, so that's effectively like a plus or minus 16, or you can look at it like a... It's, a, it's, it's like an old Neve sort of thing, but with eight volts more in terms of its ability to swing signal level. Um, and it's all very heavily biased into class A. And that was something that we, we had to do really because the transformer on its own for iron, for example, is quite a subtle device. What, you, what people like about them is the fact that they're coupled with these, these amplifiers that eventually you know, struggle to drive the transformer or they run out of headroom, but they're still class A. So they inherently um, are quite smooth, but when they do distort, they have a very musical, mm. musical overload. Um, so, you know, HMX uses a three of them with a, a pot here that actually turns the gain up to amplify and distort whilst also turning the output down. So it's mostly level compensated. Mm. So you don't hear it get loud and you're biased by, you know, yeah, it being louder is yeah, better. Yeah. Um, but effectively, it's, it's um, as you boost more, there's more and more gain, a bit more noise, um, more soft saturation. Uh, and there's also a, a, a sort of emphasis filter, which boosts the low end sort of around 50, 60 hertz, almost like the kind of bump you'd find on a tape machine. So yeah. it's, it's, it's sort of a tubey saturation, but with this bias sort of frequency. Um, and then after the distortion, we roll, we tighten some of that sub again. So it, it doesn't sound overly bassy or anything, but it just adds this subtle sort of half a dB extra information, but that actually is generating more distortion in the bass range, which obviously you then hear the harmonics yeah. kind of, it makes things sound, you can hear them on small speakers, you know. I'm sure you've tried the trick of mixing on an Oratone and... Yep. Or a Horatone as well. Horatone, yeah, <laughs> can go back to that. Uh, or an, even an NS10, and then, you know, trying to make sure you can hear your bass guitar on, on that small speaker, yeah. which, to be honest, I don't know whether you, you would agree, but I would say that's probably more prevalent and important now than it probably was 20 Definitely. years ago, because a laptop has no yeah, bass. exactly. You know, and actually they tend to use these little sort of harmonic enhancers to create perceived bass on these small speakers and small playback systems, and that's effectively what... HMX will bring. So, you know, I see a few people um, who really like using it for mastering or effectively like processing mixes. So run, I wouldn't say it's a mastering grade processor, but it can be used there. But they'll run two channels through their in their, their mastering chain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, one of the things I always liked about Black Series and, and then as a, an audience designer was that, you know, a lot of music I would do would be electronic. So I'd, you know, maybe sample, make some hip hop stuff and being able to run kicks and snares through them and get that sort of analog saturation first mm. on your sample. Effectively, like you said, get it right to tape. You know, if the sample sounds good before you program the drums with it, then you don't even have to do anything with the drums afterwards. Um, so that, that's the HMX thing. And then moving on to iron here was a small 600 ohm transformer, which is a real British transformer, very little, so it does distort, which is mm -hmm. the, the design. The whole really. point, yeah. yeah. But to get it to do that in a musical way, we actually use this, and if we can tip this up here, mm -hmm. but there's a four deck potentiometer there, so it's doing lots of things all at once. And each taper is customized, which you know previously would have been exceedingly cost prohibitive to have manufactured that, you know, a, a custom pot um, with a Western supplier. But of course we have, you know, modern manufacturing where we can take advantage of these things. Mm -hmm. So this actually um, changes the level and the drive through the transformer, whilst also level compensating the output or the damping of it, mm -hmm. so it doesn't get louder, but there's actually more distortion and more gain being thrown through the magnetics, um, whilst also changing the way we drive it so that it, re it responds differently. So there's lots of stuff going on there. Um, yeah, I mean, quite tech geeky, but... Hey, you know, <laughs> we, we can get as uh, techy and as geeky as we want to get. That's the cool thing. but. Um, I almost think of it as bottom end, top end, almost. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, actually, the the emphasis of HMX is leaning towards that 50, 60 hertz. But what we find with most classic um, transformers is that you get this sort of rising high frequency response, especially with the old British designs of the 70s. If mm -hmm. you actually look at them, you've heard the old story about you know the Beatles engineer that could perceive something that was well out of the audible range and whatever. Well, transformers themselves can ring. You know, they can have. Um, all the parasitics within the transformer, they, they don't necessarily remain fully damped. So if you imagine putting a square wave through a transformer, it doesn't stay square, it starts to become a bit jelly-like and you know, wobble around. And actually that's often caused by a resonance that's well out of the audible range, 20 kilohertz and above. Um, and actually what we've done is deliberately shaped a damping network, which we modify with this pot as well. 
mm -hmm. um, so that that resonance is just creeping the air towards 15, 20 kilohertz, and then it rolls off um, probably around 30K, somewhere around there. So it band limits the system, which makes things quiet. Um, it gives you phase shift in the top end, which I think your symbols like, you know. There's the magnetic distortion and all the sort of transient shaping that you get from that. But it, it just has this slight little air boost. And I honestly think that's why people like some of the British 70s, you know, the, the 10 series yes, yeah, modules. Because yeah. they do have, they tend to have this tiny little overshoot. Um, not much ringing, they tend to dampen that off, but just enough that it sounds like a record.